take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, you are the beginning, you are the end. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega. We are persuaded of this very thing that you who have begun with us giving us the privilege of this knowledge and understanding giving us the grace of your revelations of truth and life you will continue with us to the end even to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ a divine we are exerting ourselves on your truth I'm asking that the light of God will shine and those who are in darkness will be delivered. Those who are in bondage will be released. Those who are deceived will be recovered. Those who are backslidden will be restored. Those who are confused will understand. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I'm talking on evidence of true revelation message. Evidence of true revelation message. Can we say it? All right. We have to talk about designing the true revelation message bringing forth the evidence of true revelation message because one there are things that are true and there are things that are false we have the light we have darkness we have God we have Satan we have true prophets we have false prophets we have original we have the fake the imitation and so as it is in other things so it is in revelation message that there are true revelation messages that the lord gives to edify us to build us to strengthen us to save sinners to establish the church to sanctify the church and make the church holy but they have false revelation message or revelation messages that have come for confusion that have come to enslave that have come to cause people to go back to sin that have come to discourage those who mean to go for righteousness they have come to weaken the Christians the believers 
Therefore, as a result, we need to know which one is true revelation message and which one is the false revelation message. Again, we need to let you know this because of the challenges that are there. The Bible says that he that hears my word and does them, my does it, I will liken him to a man that builds his house upon the rock. Challenges come on that house. The rain descended from the sky. The winds blew against that house. The floor hit, I mean, hit against that house. But it did not fall. Because of challenges that come. So that you may doubt what is true. Doubt what is right. What God has given. We want to cause you to know it of a truth. So that when these challenges come, they will not move you. They hit at that house, but it does not fall because it was sounded upon the rock. You know, the false ones cannot stand challenges. The man, the other man, built his house upon the sand. The same rain descended. The winds blew. And the floods hit at that house. It fell. And great was the fall of it. Why? It was not built upon the rock, but upon sand. So, all this false revelation cannot ch stand challenges. Cannot. If you challenge, challenge the speaker, challenge us, examine them, they will not stand the proof. But the Lord will want you to be fully assured. Have a full assurance of what he has given you. That which he has given the church. In the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I read what the Lord told his disciples. Jesus Christ said from verse 13. To verse 19. When Jesus came into the course of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? He does not just want a following, but an assurance of what you are following. Who do you as a person say? Others say this, but what about you? Others have many things to say, but what about you? Maybe on these revelation messages, other people have many things to say, to challenge it, to fight against it, to cause you, to, be, to cause people to be discouraged. But what do you say? What's your conviction? The Lord is interested in your personal conviction because understanding will keep you. Assurance will preserve you. It is in your personal conviction, why, I mean, the way you have understood and grabbed it that nobody can remove it out of your hand. So, and Simon answered and said, oh, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will fight, but shall not prevail. All the messages that the Lord is giving to us, the word of God that the Lord is giving to us, the doctrines of truth that the Lord is given, the revelations of truth that the Lord is given, the gates of hell will fight against it but will never prevail. Once we know that this is from God, you are convinced you will not drop it. In 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. More of a burden. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless, unless ye have believed in them. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, and that he was buried, verse 4, and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Here Paul was saying, I preached a gospel unto you. I brought the gospel unto you. And by that gospel, you believed. You received it. And you believe it. And you are standing by it now. And you are saved. But the gospel brought to you, you are saved. Except you are not serious. Except you are not sincere. Because the gospel brought to you, the truth brought to you, got you saved. And he said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. I am convinced. I'm not doubting what I preach to you. I'm not doubting what I teach, I teach you. I'm not doubting what I wrote down for you. He said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. What is the gospel all about? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. The doctrine, the gospel which I brought centers on Christ, his death and resurrection. The, do the gospel which I brought targets sin. Christ died to get sin out of your life. The gospel which I brought speaks of the resurrection in life to come. That Christ, as Christ was, we who have believed and have been saved from sin and walking with Christ in righteousness shall arise. We shall rise at the end of time to be with Christ forever. It is the gospel of eternal life. So, I'm saying this because we know that which we have presented unto you. The word of God and the revelations of truth. I have preached it to you I have written it out in books. I have brought out people to testify of this clearly to you. And I have made these things known to you. What's our aim? To make you know Jesus. To make you know the truth. To make you know the future. To give you a heart that will fight against sin. To bring you to the holiness of God. To give you liberty of truth. To open your eyes into real worship. The worship of God that has meaning. That has value. That has eternal life. To deliver you from the traditions of men. To deliver you from false preachers. False teachers. So that you, are, you now serve God joyfully. Serve God knowing it. And you should be assured of going to heaven. And these revelations are according to scriptures. Every revelation we have brought to you has been examined to see that they are according to scriptures. You cannot pick any. All those who, could, who are challenging this revelation cannot really go to the scripture standing on a true scripture and challenge any of this revelation and say it goes contrary to the scripture this statement goes contrary to the scripture you cannot find one because everything has been examined by scripture 
to see that it is so. Someone will be saying, uh, when Lazarus died and came back to life, he did not come with a message. That is a word of ignorance. Who brought Lazarus back to life? Can Lazarus come with a message to Jesus? From who? If Jesus is Alpha and is Omega, if Jesus is the Word of God, the counsel of God, the fullness of God, what other message will be coming from who? To whom? When he is alive on earth, what other message? Come. Is it everybody that dies and comes back that comes with a message? Everything is according to the purpose of God. According to the divine counsel of the living God. Is that understood? So, where are you challenging it? What message would, Abraham, would uh, Abraham, um, Lazarus bring to Jesus? Bring from who? Did Lazarus have an encounter with God? Even in the, I mean, in the region of the dead, the rich man was, was talking to who? Was he talking to the father? He was not talking to the father. He was talking to Abraham. And for your information, before the resurrection of Jesus, no man had been to heaven except the son of man that came from heaven. So, paradise, where Lazarus and the rich man were, the, the poor Lazarus that died, which the rich man was asking Abraham to bring back to life. Are you hearing me? That where they were was underneath the earth. The paradise. It was not in heaven. It had the same, it was in the same position with the, those who have died in sin. It's only divided into two. Between us and you, there's a great gulf that is fixed. So that if anyone will cross over, he will not be able to come. So, can the, like, was the rich man talking to you, Abraham? Do you equate Abraham with God? Does Abraham have a perfect knowledge like God? Did God show Abraham his handwork, his plan? Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the earth. The secret things belong only to God. The things that are revealed are the ones we will know. Is that okay? And if God ch charges his angels with folly, that the angels themselves do not know the, the full plan of God. They do not have full understanding. Is it man on earth that died and entered heaven that will have the knowledge of God? Full knowledge? Angels came to Sodom. They didn't know whether the Lord had extra people somewhere. Do you have other people, sons and daughters, anywhere? They didn't have the full knowledge. They have to hear. Why? They are not God. Only God retains perfect knowledge of everything at the same time. Abraham was not aware of divine plan. What God was planning to do, he didn't reveal to Abraham. Except he revealed Abraham wouldn't know. Even as angels don't know the full mind of God, they don't know everything. Angels themselves desire to know these things. So, I'm saying, except this type of scriptures that are out of place, quoted just because somebody wants to say something, there is no scripture to challenge the doctrines justified by these revelations. No scripture. There is no portion of this revelation that we bring forth, uh, we interview and allow to be here and to be heard by people. Nobody can challenge it. No authority. Why? We have done so according to scriptures. We have searched it to ensure it speaks with scriptures. The people are not ready. They, they don't want. That's why they are having problems. Now, so they just wanted to challenge Jesus. Are you hearing me? They didn't want to believe in Jesus. So, they wanted to challenge him. Look at it in John chapter 7. Let's look at verse 12. 
and there was much murmuring among the people concerning him for some said he is a good man others said nay but he deceived the people nay he deceived the people verse 20 the people answered and said thou hast a devil who God about to kill thee and Jesus answered and said unto them I have done one work and you all marvel Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision not because it is of Moses but of the fathers and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses might should not be broken are ye angry at me because I have made a man every week whole on the Sabbath day judge not according to appearance judge righteous judgment the people who were judging Jesus here saying that he had a devil saying that Jesus was deceiver was a deceiver they were not judging according to righteous judgment they were judging according to denominational opinions because they didn't want Jesus that's all not because Jesus really had a devil or was a deceiver and Jesus said don't judge don't follow things after the outward appearance follow them critically what come you're just condemning somebody that because I walk on I heal somebody on the Sabbath day that's all your business all about it Jesus was proven by the scriptures why he walked on the Sabbath day he was proven by the scriptures and I made a man whole I delivered a man I set a man free on the Sabbath day and you, you're not happy a man became free a man became delivered from Satan Satan's works were destroyed on the Sabbath day you're not happy to the extent of saying the person who did it is a sinner what we're saying those who are attacking these revelations attacking those the Lord has given these revelations they are not true people they, 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 are, they are protecting another thing otherwise revelation message that came to save people that person was a terrible drunkard it is people have preached and preached and preached they could not hear just like uh, some of these our people will talk until the revelation came the person surrenders surrendered changed repented and began to to preach the word of God as a fervent preacher of Christ you say no throw away that revelation go and burn it is it not the same thing with Jesus here is there any difference the same this is my life this was my life before and now this is my life I didn't know that this jewelry this uh, palming of here this stuff I didn't know they were evil until this person came from hell for sharing the hell experience I had it and I changed I repented in dust and ashes I told God I'm sorry I removed my jewelry clean up all those things all those trousers all those palmer I cleared them up and I cleaned up my life I went to my husband I confessed all my sins to my husband I went to my wife confessed to my wife oh what I, I said God has forgiven me I've seen God please you forgive me I did my restitution you said the means by which you were sanctified saved delivered is evil that means is evil is that what you're saying that Jesus who saved this man is evil he's wicked he has a devil judge not according to appearance judge righteous judgment they said some of them of Jerusalem is not this he whom they seek to kill but no he speaketh boldly and they say nothing unto him do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ how be it man who is he is but when Christ cometh no man knows whom he is who he is some people came up and said ah they were looking for this man to kill do you kill a man that has the message of God and has the the ministry the Lord has given to him the Lord will protect that person Amen. seek 
all your killing go and do fasting for 100 days go and do night vigil um, i hear that the um, uh, a church in lagos have declared war and say they have a night vigil. okay today is saturday already they finish the night vigil war that our sister must die all these people who come from that do not give them message how that, they must die they must die whoa they have finished their night vision and there's no date are you hearing me they have finished their night vision and there's no date oh holy this must be we must scatter it go and make it with satan when you finish you 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 may become converted and join holiness movement you get what i'm saying how will they do it with jesus his hour had not come so the people now look at this say ah is this not him the one they wanted to kill but he's still they, what happened is it that they believe that he is christ now but look at the idea of some they say when christ cometh, we will not move we will not know where he is from he will just appear from nowhere this is their own erroneous knowledge is that what the scripture says on how christ will come unto us a child is born unto us a son is given behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth with a child whose name shall be called emmanuel which means god with us where you say when christ comes you will know where oh bethlehem although you are the least among the among the cities from you shall come forth he that has been from everlasting why are you saying that when Christ cometh, you will not know from where he will come? This you are using this erroneous knowledge to fight the true Jesus. They are using erroneous knowledge of scripture. They don't even know they are not even using scripture, they are using philosophy. They are using the imagination of their mind to fight the truth of God. If these people know that they are fighting the truth of God because of the imagination of their mind, they will not do that thing. A lot of those people who are challenging this thing they have no portion of scripture they are acting from outside scripture they are only not willing to believe god they don't want it they don't want to change they don't want to receive the message of god that is all not because they have any right to scripture they're standing on any scripture no they're using philosophy using other methods now let's go on then verse 28 then cried jesus in the temple as he taught saying ye both know me and ye know where i am and i am not come of myself but he that sent me is true whom ye know not but i knew him if i am if i am um, for i am from him and he sent me can you see you say you know me is it not common person the son of uh, the carpenter that will come up and say he's christ no if christ come we will not know where those people who say no, no person can die and come with message they don't have scripture for it they are not using scripture they are using the imagination of their heart i think can god be limited can god be limited the bible says in there are diversities of the gifts of the holy spirit there are diversities of administration there are diversities of oppression it's not the same manner look at in the book of hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one verse one god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets can you see diverse manners whichever way god will use to speak and the message will be understood he will use it in diverse manners if he requires somebody dying to come back with the message from the dead the lord will do it if it requires somebody sleeping so that he can pass the message to the person sleeping 
so he can now come up and say what he receives in his dream the Lord will do it if he requires an audible voice to speak and people will hear this is the voice of God the Lord will do it if he requires using an animal these people who are challenging this could not could not say how God used an animal to speak human human's voice is, is there any difference diverse manners in sundry times in diverse manners are you challenging the manner god used are you wiser than he did you join him to create the world do you have his wisdom so they are not using scripture yes you know from where i came you, 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 where i came you don't I, I cannot do you i cannot be christ but i'm affirming the father has sent me i came from him i am speaking about him the message i am given now is message from him let's take it then they said to take him but no man laid hands on him because everybody his hour was not yet come and many of the of the people believed on him and said when christ came it will he do more miracles than this which this man has done can you see some people who can think well they said uh-uh come what do you expect more before you know that somebody is a messenger from god what do you want what do you want to see the works have been done works to give life have been done then which way again when this your christ comes which other miracles are you thinking he will do that this one has not done we believe on him which other evidence can we have that a divine message from god can achieve in man that this one has not achieved he has brought idol worshippers from idolatry to jesus it has brought muslims from serving muhammad to come to serve jesus it has brought marriages that have been split as reunited the marriages it has brought prodigal sons who have left the father the heavenly father far away it has brought them back to the kingdom of god it had brought sinners back to the kingdom of god it had cast out demons so that satan could have no hold over his property again it had sanctified the people it had caused the people to do restitutions to do everything and to be righteous it has changed the dressings of women now the dress in in peace it has brought good sleep to people decent living to people what again are you thinking a message of god shall achieve that these divine revelations have not achieved what are you expecting in the church in the world in human society what are you expecting then that these revelations have not achieved that you're saying they are not from god if you will not believe me believe me for the world's sake then these people reason and said no this is the christ if christ they want their, their own christ i don't know why he will come and do extra but this one has sufficiently proved sufficiently giving us evidence i'm talking about evidence of true revelation message evidence of true revelation messenger so we're clear they believed on him please let no man shake you away the evidence are clear you yourself you are an evidence can, are you an evidence can you raise up your hand are you an evidence wave that hand before the world let them see let them see you are an evidence that this message is from jesus you are evidence that this revelation message is from jesus those ones who died and come with true message yes they are from jesus it has changed your life Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So now let's go ahead to see what the Lord is saying here in the state in, uh, in, uh, in 
in verse 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. Concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Do you now know? The common people don't have the problem. It is the leadership. And the reason is because of envy and jealousy. You are carrying the congregation from me. You are moving people's attention. I'm afraid my people are looking to you now. I'm afraid the people are losing my control. And we are going to lose our prestige. Our honor. Our respect. We are losing it. It is the leadership that is fighting. The common people don't have any problem. They will hear Jesus gladly. Joyfully. Salvation has come. Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's the common people. But the leaders is affecting us. It's depopulating our church. It's affecting our income. It's removing members from our church. We must fight this. That's it. They are Pharisees. They are scribes. Yes. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. He sh ye shall seek me, ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, with the Peter, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Peter, will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this? That he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, Peter, ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. As many as are thirsty will receive the message of the Lord. For blessed are the poor, for this is the kingdom of God. You are hungry for righteousness. Blessed are they that hunger and taste after righteousness, for they shall be filled. This word has come and has opened your eyes. Enjoy it. It is that it is a feast God has prepared for you. They sent you away. They, 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 you were in a desert land, suffering, hunger, it, suffering, starvation, the starvation of dead, and the God of mercy heard your cry and send messenger, send helpers to cause you to know him and understand and know the way. You have heard him. You have known the way. You are walking in the way. You have got the truth. The life of Jesus is in you. Move on. Yes. That's the encouragement God has for you. Don't listen to any man. Don't listen to any superintendent. Don't listen to any overseer. Don't listen to any bishop that is speaking contrary to these things. They have no scripture to stand upon. They have no scripture. The scripture they bring, they have no basis. Have no foundation. Let's examine their scriptures. There's no truth in that scripture. The interpretation is altogether wrong. So, that's what we need to understand. What God has to say. Now, go forward. And see what Jesus was telling the people. Verse 39. But this pecky of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people therefore, when they had this saying said of a truth, this is the prophet. Of a truth, this is the prophet. Of a truth, this message came from God. Can you say it? It has changed lives. It has changed lives. Look at it in the book of Matthew. We still come back here. But look at it in the book of Matthew. Chapter 11, verse 2 to verse 5. The Bible tells us here saying, Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? 
Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do here and see. Let's read verse 5 in chorus. One, two, go. Now shout verse 6 together. One, two, go. Exactly. The black, the, the, the Jesus, when they said, John sent to find out, please, I am still in my suffering in prison. My understanding of Christ is, I was thinking that he would not allow human beings to suppress me like this. But I am still there. But altogether, I just want to verify. Are you he that is, is to come? Or do we look for another? John, where are you doubting again? Is it suffering that is making you doubt? That suffering you are going through is going to give you great future glory. Yeah. That's the wisdom of God. To deliver you from that suffering is to de deter you from the reward of martyrdom. There is a crown called the crown of martyrdom. And the Lord wants you to be the first in the New Testament in, in his time when he came to human as a human being to be the first to, to possess that crown. What a reward, what a privilege. That's why he didn't bother. You have also finished your work, John. You finish your work. You pointed to the Messiah and the Messiah has come. So your work has finished. That's why he didn't bother. You are dying gloriously. Then he now said unto them, uh, he, he, Jesus answered and said to those disciples, Go and show John again those things which you do here, and see the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the dead hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who so ever shall not be offended in me don't be offended john i am the christ what other signs of christ do you need what other evidence of christ do you need what other signs of a messenger of god do you need with all the changes you are seeing families are changing missions are changing governments are changing churches are changing which I don't read, what will a messenger of Christ achieve more than this? Is it not to go into all the world and preach the gospel and cause people to repent of their sins? Repentance in their thousands. Genuine repentance with evidence. People that abide in the faith, that ye may bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, they are remaining. Have you repented because of this revelation and you are remaining in Christ? Can you raise up that hand again? Because of and you are still remaining. Then what is the, what is the other evidence? What are the, what are these pictures looking for? If they are of God, what are they really looking for? If your mind is to get people saved, you see them getting people saved. You say no, it must be coming through you. It must come through your own denomination. It must come through your ministry. When the disciples saw some people casting out demons, they forbade them. Jesus said, no. They are doing the same thing we are doing. You are forbidding them, forbidding them. What is my work? Is it not to cast out demons, get demons out, and bring up people to their real life? And these people are doing it. You feel that they are not in our company. Why? Are you not joyful? Are you not joyful that people are getting set for your God? My brother, that is envy working in your heart. That is envy. That is working in your heart. That's why you're taking that action against the true messengers of the living God. Now, I will still speak to you again. Go back to, go back to the book of John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse, 40, verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they had this saying, said of a truth, This is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Had not the scripture said 
that Christ came out of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was and I know the reason why even men of God respectable men of God trusted men of God still err in this matter see the knowledge they have here the knowledge is correct their problem was they did not do diligent investigation the knowledge they have was correct the prison jesus was in galilee was living in galilee is that clear jesus of that man of galilee so they, they said no i i stand my ground the scripture tells us that jesus the christ will come from bethlehem of the family of david lineage of david so but how is this how are you calling this man christ who is of bethlehem who is of galilee no man of god you are right in your own judgment but you are wrong in one point you didn't do diligent investigation if you did diligent investigation if you had made proper inquiry if you have searched clearly to look at history to inquire here and inquire from there before you take that rash decision you would have discovered the truth that jesus was really of God, of bethlehem look at it in the book of luke luke chapter 2 luke chapter 2 from this one and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of syria and all went to be taxed everyone into his own city and joseph also went up from galilee out of the city of nazareth into judea unto the city of david which is called which is called bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of david to be taxed with mary his exposed wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there in bethlehem while they were there in bethlehem of judea the days were accomplished that she should bring should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the lord came upon them and the glory of the lord shone round about them and they were so afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for i behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord give a clap of to jesus Amen. Can you see? He that hastened with his feet, seen it. Be not rush in with their mouth. For why must you utter a foolish thing? Don't be so rushed in decision. Especially you, take it, you, you want to speak on a great cause. A great cause that involves the works of God. Don't be so hasty. Else you will sin don't be so rash with your mouth else you will offend for why will you say uh, it was a mistake that will be seen to you you they are saying if though he is not christ because the scripture says christ will be born in bethlehem city of david yes you are right christ was born there if only the scripture did not say he will remain there in his ministry the scripture just talk about being just as you know but not that he will remain there he was born there the ways of god are such that the proud cannot find it only humility only humility can lead you to finding truth 
if you boast of yourself if you are puffed up there will be strength and wisdom in your life so in their own saying nobody can die and come back have you checked up the ways god works have you made a diligent search in scripture no they're telling lies they're only bringing those things to sell the to sell the to check and investigate to see whether they are witnesses of these things or no before you are coming to say their lies have you investigated properly to check can you present your facts with witnesses how you concluded that it was a lie what effort did you make to conclude that it was a lie can you present that why are you saying it's a lie you are making a mistake a costly mistake you wanted to say it was not scriptural it's scriptural christ was born in bethlehem the words spoken by these people are scriptural words so you can't challenge it on the basis of those words now you come to say it's a lie nobody died were you there when they died uh, the, the, uh, did you, the, were you there why are you saying to where they say they died to, inquire, to investigate whether they really died so that we, you can have facts so can you understand what we're saying now that no man's mistake will come to you lay hands suddenly on no man's opinion else you will be partaker of another man's sin the truth is god himself not man the truth is god not man the truth is jesus not a preacher we are pictures of the truth meaning we are pictures of jesus but we're not jesus so your faith should be in christ not on man not on the leader of your denomination the founder of your denomination who has told you that he has gone to heaven already as somebody said yesterday he said we are all candidates of heaven we are, we are all to write the exam of heaven who has passed that you feel that his opinion is perfect and here is scripture you will abandon scripture please don't ruin your soul back to john chapter 7 john chapter 7 verse 43 so there was a division among the people because of him and some of them would have taken him but no man lay, laid hands on him then came the officers to the chief priests and pharisees and they said unto them where have you not brought him the officers answered never man spoke like this man <laughs> <laughs> are you hearing me Hallelujah. when they stood there they, they all their strength god overcome overcome the chain they were holding to arrest him fell down never man go and listen to our sister speak with the fervency from hell all those stories that we have been hearing will just vanish all those ones that say no 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 this is a lie this have a devil they say no man no a person who has demon doesn't speak like this the vibration of truth the sincerity that slaps your face the atmosphere of righteousness the power of conviction that flows everywhere the witness of the holy spirit that accompanies that ministration you will not you will bother you will say all those people is because they have not come to hear that's why they're busy talking about it so then verse 47 then answered them the pharisees are you also deceived have any of the rulers of the pharisees believed on him how will you believe when you are looking for your own authority how will you believe except you be converted and become like children you can never enter the kingdom of god you're protecting your crown you're protecting your throne you're protecting your church you're protecting your denomination you're protecting your members how will you believe how will you accept the message you are bigger than the message you are more mature than it 
You're wiser than the message. More anointed than the message. So how can you get the message? It's for small children. You have hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good unto you. Come out from your wisdom and the foolish. Then you can understand these truths. They are preserved for the simple. Hallelujah. Amen. Raise up that hands and wave them before the God of heaven. And let no man bring you to bondage. Let no man hinder eternal life. Let no man hinder the grace of God in your life. I thank God that you are not denominational. Because denomination is doing the greatest evil to human beings in this generation greatest evil. People have left Jesus and are following him. They have left the Bible. They are following traditions. Because of denominations. Blessed are you that the power of denomination has been broken in your life. Yeah. That gives you liberty to come freely on him that to Jesus. That gives you liberty to walk freely for him without being limited. You can express your fervent love for Jesus. Do as much as you can. That's the word of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it tells us the, 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 the blessedness of being free in case you are free. Amen. I read from verse uh, 32, 32. But I have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care it for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married, care it for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. This, he that is married, he that is unmarried, he that is denominational has to care how to please the authorities of the denomination. But he that is not denominational in his Christianity cares directly for Jesus. What concerns Jesus? What, what is of Christ? What, how you can expand your life for him? What you can do? You obey his word directly. But those who are denominationally bound, they care for how to please their overseer, how to please their pastor, how to please their superintendent, how to please... There are two differences here. I, who will you be bound? Will you want to be pleasing, superintendent, or pleasing Jesus? Don't allow yourself to marry a denomination. Don't and be free. Be free in your life to serve this Jesus. To have direct access. Mm, don't go to that meeting. Don't go to that conference. Uh, you are, hey, my overseer say, hey, hey, my, hey, 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 hey. If you have the liberty of spirit for Jesus, you will do many things for Christ in this life. Amen. That does not mean you don't go to a church, you are not belonging to a denomination, but don't wear it in your body. Are you hearing me? Yes. Don't be putting on the marriage ring of denomination. So everybody see me, it shows that I belong to this denomination. Don't do that. Be free. Be free to serve this Jesus. Don't allow anybody to interfere. That does not mean you're stubborn over there. No, you're not stubborn. But it means don't allow them to rule you off from Jesus. If they're bringing rules and regulations that are contrary to Jesus, refuse. You are for Jesus directly. Amen? Amen. So, that's what we have shown you. Or reveal these things unto you. That you may understand. Therefore, beware. Beware. Beware of men. Beware of men. In the book of uh, Acts of Apostles chapter 20. Acts of Apostles chapter 20. We read verse 26 to 33. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, 
which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, and not fearing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch. And remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I've converted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Be careful. Watch over yourself. You who are leaders, chapter leaders, coordinators, watch over those people. Because among us, you'll be surprised. Among us shall men arise. Ah, were you not a leader? Were you not come? Did you not preach in one of our conferences? How have you come up to be speaking perverse things? How have you come up to now be saying all of them are liars? Is a band they're doing there? Eh? How? What happened? Is demon? Is marine kingdom? <coughs> you mean you came to marine kingdom and you preach there? From among you, men shall arise. Speaking perverse things, wicked things, that you will wonder, where is this man from? Ah, ah. What happened to you? I told you, say, you also had revelation. That you have more revelation than others. Now you say, all those people who have revelations are liars. Ah. The Bible said the one it will happen. Satan can sponsor somebody in if we are not watchful. Because when some, one, one of such persons come in, unfortunately I was just relying on the books he had written. Somebody introduced him to me. Ah, there's a man in Lagos. He is ah, he's very fucking. He's very, oh, he's very zealous. He is oh, the Lord has written a book. This number ninety nine percent. What what book? Okay, ninety nine percent. What is it? He has written a book like this, and this, and quickly gave my number to the person. And he called me back. He, the person called me at the week of the conference, and I was happy. I felt that this type of people. Because we know spiritual discipline in holiness. And the way while God put it in my heart, I desire to perfect people. To strengthen people. I wish to make them better. Christianity is not only in the gospel, it's in the life. And some of these people may not have the life. So I desire to draw them closely. So I can bless them. Let them hear teaching. The teaching of gospel doctrines of righteousness that can establish them. So oh, we're having conference this week. Can you come? All right. Uh, I am from. The, I'm in this place now. Okay. I will try to see if I come. And you came. I introduced the people to introduce you to the people just in love as a Christian minister. Then that's how I begin to show you love. Do you do this? You do this? Do you do this? I didn't know your foundation. That's the problem. I didn't know your foundation. I didn't know where you came from. I didn't know the church you came from. When you say you were pastoring a church of 25,000 and Jesus said you should leave it and go to sanctify the church, um, 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 sanitize his church, I thought it was true. That you really raised up a church up to 25,000. It is later someone will say, who told you that uh, there was anything like that? You have a church of 5,000 nobody knows you in this country. You have a church of 10,000 in Lagos. Nobody knows you. And you say 25,000. I said, I didn't know those type of things. Hey, thank God I made the mistake early enough. So that this type of mistakes will not follow. Amen? Amen? So, be very careful that men will not arise and begin to speak perverse things to confuse your mind. People that have no foundation in Christ. They are not born again themselves. They don't know God. God doesn't know them. If they knew him at all, they had left him. I 
and they begin to speak perverse things and you begin to follow oratorial language not the spirit of christ be careful we commit you to the word of god the revelations we bring to you are according to scriptures for the salvation of your life therefore be careful that no man carry you away no man spoil you be careful of evil revelations be careful it, don't say we have introduced you to revelation so every revelation you go for it even the animals that eat grass they don't eat every grass because some grass are poisonous it's not everything you eat so it's not everything called revelation that you look at it in the book of matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 verse 24 another parable put he thought unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed pies among the wheat and went his way can you see good seed pies there are good seed revelation there are pies revelation good seed revelation and there are pies revelation good seed revelation come from god pies revelation come from the enemy come from the enemy and yet sometimes the enemy can put on Esau's clothes he and put get skin that has ears and put it on that you may feel it and feel you will see, see ah this is his body hmm, i'm smelling my son's clothes but you will detect it in the voice except your careless you will detect it in the voice they will frame the frame the same experience the same appearance of jesus the same thing as usual and begin to give out something you'll be seeing jesus jesus but then go where you'll see it in scripture that they, have, they won't follow scripture you will not follow like the revelation that has just come that says you should not wear which type of clothes don't wear what silk don't wear what jeans don't wear righteousness has come down to which cloth to wear and which cloth not to wear again you should not eat what cowboy bobo eh? okay fish that doesn't have fins and uh, what again pig milk sardine <laughs> Amen. In the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, verse 14 to 23. blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us the ordinances teach it not touch not do this that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way kneeling it to the cross to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers demonic forces he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it let no man therefore judge you in it or in drink or in respect of holy day christmas or easter or of the new moon or of the sabbath days 
which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of christ whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of the lord whether ye eat or drink whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god the body is christ again in verse 18 i mean in, in, in verse 20 in verse um, there's what again verse 18 let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worship of angels intruding into those things which he had not seen then he puffed up by his fleshly mind let no demon angel come flash like jesus and come to beguile you you now go to be serving satan and say his revelation that's how they beguile galatian christians so who, has, who has bewitched you that you should turn away from the gospel of faith and be following after touch not do not teach you must circumcise yourself you must do who, who, who brought these things to you you have died by that i'm laboring again that you should leave those things have come to kill you they have come to destroy your life an enemy has done this now look at verse 19 and not holding the head from which all the body by all the body by joints and bands having nourishment minister having nourishment minister and knit together increase with the increase of god who are for if ye be dead with christ from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances touch not Test not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. It is wisdom of the devil to bring you to willingly worship after another pattern. The wisdom of Satan bring you to will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in your honor to the satisfying of the flesh ah, don't eat sardine don't eat fish with things don't eat this the rules of the old testament that ended in christ and the lord has called us to grace the grace of god and said to peter rise kill and eat whatever god has cleansed call not thou unclean why is he calling them unclean romans chapter 14. who told him it is satan that is saying fish without fins are unclean you should not eat you should not eat this you should not eat that who told him romans chapter 14. The Bible tells us from verse 1. He that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputi disputations. For one believer that he may eat all things, another who is weak, eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let him not him that which eateth not judge him that eateth. For what? For God hath received him. If there's any reason why you don't want to eat, don't disturb another person is that clear yeah. you say you don't want to eat pepe because you have stomach is it everybody that has stomach also huh? god has accepted him don't, dis don't condemn him he says who art thou that judges another man's servant to his own master he standeth or form it yeah he shall be holding up for god is able to make him stand one man estimate one day above another another estimate every day alike let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind now you say christmas everybody who celebrates christmas is going to hell everybody who celebrates easter is going to hell huh. but the christmas is supposed to be which month october that is where satan comes in which portion of scripture can we find october the day which christmas was supposed to be celebrated or the time that jesus was born which day it is not inspiration is that clear 
that October suggested is not in scripture. And as long as it has not spoken according to this scripture, there's no light in them. It's a lie. Because you can't say the book of John chapter 3 verse 8 said he was born in this period. There's no time. No date was given. If date was given, they would have got it. Theologians would have brought it out. It would be in said scripture. Insp- that would be part of inspiration. God did not give it because it's not part of inspiration and it's not essential. Let no more therefore make assumption. But why is Christmas celebrated? Yes, you could be right. As the story went, as we could understand, that of course that day, 25th December, was being used to worship idols. Whatever is the idol uh, of uh, is it the Roman, uh, Roman time. Then, converts of Christianity during this period were always affected because they would go to idol worship. They would go and eat and drink there and celebrate idol, idolatry. Then the Bible said, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. What do we do to keep our people from being contaminated year to year? Let's fix a great feast during this period. So that instead of losing these people, we shall keep them. God gives you wisdom. He respects your feasts. When the Jew, Jewish people fix feasts, didn't he respect it? He respected it in the book of Esther. Then, 25th December is being used. Well, these people are serving idols over there. These people are also saying, it is the day where Jesus was born. We don't know the day, but we can assume anyone. If you don't know where you are born, can't you go and swear by declare a feed of it? <laughs> ah, you're not telling lies. Are you hearing me? You're not telling lies. I don't know where you but I think, I think, I think who we'll declare a feed of it? So, what is the problem? And the activity there. You say, okay, it is, it, no, that day, they are worshipping idol. Which day are they not worshipping idol? Sunday is the way they, the day they worship the idol of the sun. Monday, Monday is the day they worship the idol of the moon. And yet these are days. Uh, we, uh, uh, where are you going to church on Sunday? I'm going to, I mean, what are you going to do on Sunday? I'm going to church to worship God. Where did you call that name? That name belongs to idol of the sun. Is that what we should be doing now? Satan. Satan. So, you check these revelations coming from pies that the enemy has sown. You check them by scriptures. In the book of First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 5, the Bible says, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducive spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. Every creature of God is good. Everybody say it. Every creature of God is good. Say it again. Every creature of God is good. The fish. Titus fish. Which other one? Catfish. Which other one? Eh? Crayfish. Yes. Every creature of God is good. And the Bible says, and nothing to be refused. Nothing. If the boy's revelation and scripture, if the boy, this man's revelation and scripture, which one is higher? Are we coming to be hearing revelation? When the scripture is so clear, because he makes some truth, makes some truth in, inside, don't delight in those truths. We have enough, we have a clean place where we can get the truth of Christ. A clean place. Satanic revelation. They cannot agree with scripture. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. 
the fire for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer sanctified by the word of God and prayer so you can get what we're saying go through that book of Romans chapter 14 you, you can only understand truth so clear make no man therefore come and beguile you you will not willingly go and submit when you go to those things you have left Jesus because the spirit that appeared to him is the spirit you will be following that's it that's what the world against false revelation second corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 to 1 to 6 second corinthians chapter 11 1 to 6 would to god ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me for i am jealous over you with godly jealousy for i have exposed you to one husband that i may present you as a chest virgin to christ i but i fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ i rejoice god used revelations to to settle many arguments in christianity the arguments on jewelry argument do you wear trousers or not do you palm your hair or not attachment and all these things god uh, do you second wife third wife do you do divorce do you do all these things by divine revelation they must settle this argument in christianity and bring christian unity to the church now satan wants to come and scatter it so that people will not say we don't want it again it, this type of revelation is to scatter the whole world and say Christianity has already begun. Satan brought it so that people become say, hey, if revelation is like that, we don't want the game, we don't want throw everything good and bad, throw it away. That's the devil. <laughs> but may God preserve us. May God preserve his pure revelation. One thing I got did clearly everywhere that revelation is hard I, I was receiving call call from abuja call from this place call from here right from lagos from this place one about hey pastor have you had it have you had hey what has happened say me, me i never agree never agree people are crying everywhere poison has entered into christianity poison has entered into christianity may god always did you separate them that if the devil brings, we can't stop Satan from bringing. But those people that Satan use, you can go to them and persuade them, persuade them out. There are two types of people. They are deceivers and they are deceived. Is that clear? The deceiver came to say, I was the one who did it. I was there. I saw it that number of years ago. I was the in fact I was the one that made earring. I was the one that start I was the one that, that manufactured this thing. That's a deceiver. When you check and see that other things are not conformity to scripture. But the deceived man, a spirit appeared. He is not claiming originality. He is just saying, I am you know, I was told. I was told. Go and tell him that what the person that told you is set and not God. He said, hey, Oh, I didn't know. I withdraw. There's a difference. But if you go to the, a deceiver himself and say, hey, Why are you telling the people you are? He will defend himself. Because I say I am the one. If you don't believe me, okay, but I believe myself. So we don't have, as for a deceiver, we leave him with God or leave her with God. But for the deceived, we must help to bring him out. To bring her out because he was deceived. So somebody should label on such false people if they can hear confusion is coming among women how god says now if you say the lord jesus that said he brought melinda he brought margaret he brought uh, samuel is the same jesus that brought the heart that has met you as has called you now where is your statement and linda different linda shot a woman that jesus brought I said, I will show you how I want my daughters to dress. She plaited her hair. 
and dressed well with uh, with long sleeve with flowing gown and jesus made her to be turning around how many of you have this yes uh-huh jesus made her to be turning just watch her and the same jesus has come to you and say any woman that played her hair hellfire if the same jesus told margaret the robber trait of fashion that makes look at like attachment avoided but the other trait be free if this is the same jesus where is your jesus saying any woman that that tie her hair with any trait is going to hell which jesus then if the word of god then will say if the word of god will say the long hair is given to the woman for covering for the long hair is to a woman for her glory and your jesus say no 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 trim the hair who's jesus then we should do diligent investigation we will discover these people amen therefore in conclusion in conclusion don't listen to the voice of a stranger my sheep hear my voice and they follow me the voice of a stranger will be not here for they know not the voice of a stranger you will know when the lord speaks everything will be according to his word everything will be according to his word my sheep hear my voice the holy spirit will give the witness there are three that bear witness the, the, the spirit the word and the blood that testimony shall bring somebody to the cleansing of the blood of christ salvation from sin and evil so but where you see contrary things is a testimony ministering bondage frustration fear not of god so don't listen to the voice of strangers number two do not submit to i mean number two do not submit to denominational traditions don't join your denomination to fight blindly denomination will not go to heaven and you can follow the multitude in that denomination to go to hell god does not respect person he does not respect person check up everything study to show yourself approved unto god and ver- verify these things well before you take decision if others will do you can't just join them blindly you know yourself you know your desire you have the bible you have people to inquire from from the mouth of two or three witnesses your denomination is one witness check up other, other places other true places to know how it is because church is not only for your denomination now next avoid those that cause division avoid those that cause division in the book of romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 i read the 17 and 18. now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what go to their meetings should you go to their meetings avoid their meetings for such for they that are such serve not our lord jesus christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple you think that let me go let me don't go there the bible says avoid they have powerful tongue they have powerful testimony after the person has said hey these people are marine kingdom god told me yesterday i didn't dream yesterday jesus showed me clearly they are marine kingdom they came from the sea okay after this okay now we're praying together now oh, demon come up 
come out, come out. Then people are following. Come, come. He said, hey, if God is not the one who told this person, how? See, power is coming out. Are you joining power with truth? Do you know the source of power? Do you have only sources, one source of power? And do you also know the patience of God? The forbearance of God. That God can bear with the ignorant. So avoid them. Avoid. Those terrible books they have written, avoid them. So that no man who is not ready to keep his life come to destroy your own. Again, be unmovable in the faith. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The Bible tells us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steadfast in this truth. Be steadfast in this ministry. Be steadfast in spreading this good news. Be steadfast in spreading these revelations. These CDs. Keep on. See how you became useful. You who didn't have souls before. For many years you have been a Christian. You have never made a convert. But see how many converts are surrounding you now. Genuinely saved. Please be steadfast. Don't withdraw. Continue. And let's work together. We will do much for Jesus. All this noise you are hearing, a noise of the devil, our enemy. But they will not discourage us. Stand firm. The rapture shall meet us in the faith. We shall continue together in heaven. We shall be rewarded. Rise up upon your feet and worship him. Give thanks to the Almighty. Give thanks to the Almighty. Receive the light that has come to you. Receive the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. The entrance of your world giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. That the Lord will keep you in these truths. Your feet will not be removed. You will not be shaken. God will keep us in these truths which we have found. All will give you glory. We give you honor. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray.
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4318. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. Whoa.